Today on Dockside TV, we're going to talk wintertime trout, deep water jigging, and just what color matrix shad we're using. Stay tuned for this episode of Dockside TV. Whenever you fish in these deep ledges like this, looking for these beautiful wintertime trout, and put this one in a box. I was on the Holy Jolie. I'm going to show you kind of how you want to do it. The most important thing is you want to figure out the distance from the shore they are, which is the depth of the water they're in. Some days they're right up on the rocks, some days they're up closer to where they're um, almost underneath the boat. So the way to figure that out is you're going to throw real tight to the rocks, get the boat a good cast distance off. That way you can work it all the way back to the boat. And what's going to happen when you're fishing these dead-end man-made canals like this is you're going to notice most of your bites are going to come from the same water column. Some days are going to be tight, some days are going to be close to the boat. And that's just telling you they're either shallow or deep. Now, here in particular today, they've been about halfway between the boat and land. So I've quit throwing all the way up to the bank and just been focusing on that mid-range area. There he is. Oh, that fish stroked it. Focusing on that mid-range area, which is about, I don't know, I'd say they're sitting in about 12 to 14 foot of water right now. And there's different kinds of bites out here. You know, when you're fishing deep water jigs like this, sometimes it's a subtle little tap that you barely feel. Sometimes you don't even feel it at all. You go to jig it and he's on there. When that happens, you just wanna keep on coming up with your rod tip. And sometimes it's like that right there where the bait's falling in the bottom and you see all your slack get straightened out. the keeper and these fish range in size you'll catch one like this which is about 13 incher and then on the very next cast you might get one about three pounds so not as big as I've seen them around here fishing these industrial style canals and these rocks about a six pounder is a pretty doggone big one Yes. Oh shoot. Hold on. Let's see if we can get one more. See me leaning forward? That's me opening the bow. I'm trying to get it back to the bottom. The boat kind of drifted off some and it's pulling tension. And then you want it to fall back to the bottom. So sometimes when I can't get it to the bottom, I might lean forward. It's called we call it throwing slack back. Back in there. Just hold anyway, you want to keep, you want to fish with slack. That way, the bait can get back down to the bottom. It's about a seven or eight count to hit the bottom to begin with initially. Jig, jig, jig. Let it fall back to the bottom. Pop, 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 pop. 
fall back to the bottom. And what you're doing is you're going from six foot of water down to 10, down to 14. You're coming off of a drop, and that's where those fish are sitting is on them drops. You just got to figure out how deep off the drops they're sitting. See if we can get a few more. This is the good eating size right here. We're looking for his mama, but we will take it. Ever since they built this wall in Chalmette, which is known as the Great, the Great Wall of Chalmette. It's converted this fishery from what used to be a banner, spectacular, phenomenal spring and summertime fishery. Trout of six, seven, eight pounds were very common. And the fishery was more of a live bait area, you know, May, June, was when it was best. It had really, really salty water in here, and these fish would get in here and spawn in these areas. Big rafts of mullets would be around, big shrimp. Oh, there it was. All through the summer. Now, they created this wall and these dams in the midst of go, and what it's done is it's blocked that flow of water coming through from that Breton Sound area, which is pure salty salinity water and what happens when you do that is our the trout kind of leave and they don't like you know they, they need heavy salt in the spring and the summer when they're laying their eggs so we miss that around here this time during those months but what we do get there he is we get a very good winter time and fall fishery now speckled trout do not need as much salt in the fall that's a good one and instead of those big giants that this place used to be known for we're still happy because we're left with these which is your basic 14 to 18 inches and you can catch plenty plenty of them in the winter time Chalmet area in the Great Wall. There's a good look at a wall right there. It's a big giant levee protection against hurricanes and flooding. But what it does is it provides a great haven for speckled trout. And the best part about down here is it's just endless and endless amounts of fishing, fishing spots. You can fish the wall itself, you can fish rocks, you can fish dead ends around here. It's not just the wall. Although the wall is one of the best places to fish, but it's just endless and endless amounts of fish. Let me see if I can get one more right here. This wall serves multiple purposes. Not only does it help keep the floodwaters out of certain areas, it also provides a great habitat for speckled trout. itself there's a lot of a lot of current this is a little bit different fishing than those dead end man-made canals there's current here so we're using three eight ounce jig heads now that way we can get it down to the bottom and cut through that current you want to find little eddy breaks and so on and so forth things to block some of the current we got a hard current moving through there but right here it's pretty stagnant See if we can get one right behind this boulder. 
Although we're fishing deep water, a lot of people think big jig heads, and sometimes that is the case. Three eighths, half ounce, and so forth. I'm using a quarter and a five sixteenths. That's a five sixteenths right there. And when you're fishing these dead end canals like this, although it might you might be fishing 20 foot of water, you can still get just about any jig head down to the bottom for this simple reason. There isn't any tide back here. You know, if it's real windy, we gotta switch to a three eighths because the wind will just throw this around like a rag doll. But it's pretty calm right now, stagnant water. And what I want this bait to do is, is to fall slowly through the water column and it just entices more strikes. Let's see if we can get a few more. I'm throwing it up close and working it back to the boat. And after I pop it, it's, come, it's making a nice slow presentation back down to the bottom. And these little trout are grabbing it and snatching it up. And you can see that we pop it pretty hard sometimes. Even though the water temperature is cool, or actually, I'd say cold, it's been running 55 to 62, depending on each day. Even though we're popping it hard, we always let it go back down to the bottom. So we're lifting it off the bottom, of, you know, probably five feet, and we're getting the attention of some of those suspended fish. But the key is you can't just pop it hard and not let it go back down to the bottom. So you gotta be disciplined on letting the bait fall back down to the bottom. If you just keep popping it, reeling your slack, popping it, and you're not letting it continuously get back down to the bottom, you're just not gonna really catch fish because contact with the bottom is very important. Every time you pop it, it's a three second count or so for it to remake, con remake contact with the bottom. And there is days where it seems like a lighter presentation you know you just kind of working it real soft off the bottoms better you know kind of like this almost like a, a worm but I don't think it's cold enough for that yet we're getting bites popping it hard so we're gonna just keep on that's the size we're looking for we go ahead and put the camera down focus on these pretty wintertime trout. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dockside TV. Make sure to check out all our episodes on Dockside TV. We have several fish in this Chalmette area around the Great Wall of Chalmette. Until next time, good fishing. Come out and get some like this. Make sure to stay up to date with all of our Dockside TV episodes. Simply hit the subscribe button right here on your YouTube channel. Stay up to date with all of the action going on around the surrounding areas as we catch multiple species of fish from trout to bass to redfish, flounder, and even crappie. Make sure to hit the post notification button also, which will allow you to know when our next and freshest Dockside TV episodes are uploaded.